CC welcomes you to have church with us during the hour of harvest. Call in your prayer request or praise report now. The WLJC prayer team is standing by to talk and pray with you. We have some very special musical guests here this evening to share in song the good news of the gospel. So sit back, relax, sing along, and join in with us as we pray for you and the needs of all our viewing audience. Hour of Harvest is touching countless souls from the Appalachian Mountains to the Bluegrass region, across the nation, and around the world. Live from our studios in Beattyville, Kentucky, here is your host of the Hour of Harvest, Margaret Drake. Good evening and welcome to our service tonight. We really want you to stay with us because we're going to spend some time just going before the Lord and enjoying His fellowship. And you know, we can do this every single day. We don't have to wait till Sunday to get to feel the presence of the Holy Spirit because He's with us all the time. And so tonight we especially welcome those of you that that are sick and suffering and just a little on the discouraged side maybe tonight, a little depressed. We want the service to be a uplift for you. And we have some good folk that will uh, that will bring some encouragement your way when they start to sing. So call us if you need to, and if not, just enjoy the service. And so we want to share some scripture for those of you that could not read today. Uh, you're just too sick or your eyesight's uh, not good now. Psalms 121. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Psalms 121, only eight verses, but the promises of how God will take care of us. Our help comes from Him, and and we always watch. He always watches over us, and He never He never takes a nap, and so we we're never out of His sight. And so to me, that is a great comfort. You know, if you if you have a baby or a young child, you've got to keep your eyes on them all the time because especially when they get about two years old, they can get away from you so quick. And uh, so uh, we don't have to worry about getting out of God's sight because He sees us all the time. And to me, that is security, that He is looking out for us and going to take care of us. And so tonight, if... Uh, if you have a good praise report that we could share, we'd love to hear about it. And or if you need for the Lord to do something for you, we've over the weekend we've seen some really good big miracles happen, unusual things. But and we know that things like that does not just happen. It's because someone has prayed and God has answered someone's prayers. All right, let's pray right now. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this night. We thank you for these people that have come to uh, minister. And Lord, we just thank you for their lives, their church, and, and the influence that they've had in this world for you. And Lord, we pray for each one of them, the ones that have been sick. We pray that you'll strengthen them and anoint them. And for the phone operators, Lord, you know what? Uh, what their needs are, and so we don't have to tell you all this. You know everything about us, and so just help us. Help us tonight, Lord, and bless all of the folk that have joined us, regardless of where they are, Lord. We know they are just like us. They need your help on a daily basis, so let us see and to feel uh, you dealing with people tonight, Lord. Give us victory in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, tonight we are happy to have uh, with us the 11th Hour Ministries from uh, uh, Hazard, Kentucky with Pastor Terry Joseph. And uh, uh, their phone number is 606-439-4988. And uh, they're going to sing and lift you up. And I'm sure that you're going to, you're going to be blessed by what they have to say. 
Uh, let's welcome right now, 11th Hour Ministries from Hazard, Kentucky. All right, we're certainly glad to be here tonight. We count it a great honor and a great privilege just to be here. We appreciate Sister Margaret and all the staff here at the station and the wonderful work that they're doing. So tonight we just come to have church. That's all we know to do, and we're going to lift up the name of Jesus. Because without him, we wouldn't even be here tonight. The song says, I can't even walk without him hold my hand. We need him. So we hope tonight that if you don't know Christ, that you'll get to know him before we get done. And uh, so we just come to worship the Lord tonight. We're going to start out on an old song. says, in my robe of white, I'm going to fly away after a while. Amen. Start us out then. I'd like to send it out to my brother Bradley Joseph. Hope he enjoys our program tonight. And also to my sister Bertha Hilton in Sayersville. Also like to send it out to Jimmy Murray and Angel. Hope they enjoy our program tonight. Well, in my robe of white, I will fly away to that land so fair.
heaven. Amen. What a wonderful time it's going to be when we get to the other side. Amen. We miss our older sister tonight. She wasn't able to be with us, Sister Teresa. She usually plays the piano, but she was sick tonight. And so my baby sister is filling in for us tonight. And her husband, Darrell, and her daughter, Chelsea, is also with us tonight. And we just appreciate uh, them for helping us out. Then my meanest sister, Joyce, is on the drum. She's the, she's the middle one. We always call her the mean one, but she's just full of life, and, and uh, we love her so much. She's just a wonderful, wonderful person, and we appreciate her. We got Brother Frederick back here again tonight on the bass, and uh, I got my, my main sidekick right here, old Dan the man, Daniel, with us tonight, and We've watched him grow up at this station, and we appreciate what God's doing in his life. He's making just a fine young man. Amen. Mom and Dad, uh, they're responsible for every one of us, I guess, and we uh, appreciate my mom and dad, Paul and Nola. They just, uh, they live what they preach, and uh, that means a lot. They're the greatest uh, Christians that I know, and I appreciate them tonight. The old Ethan over there. Preacher, singer, I'm telling you, just an, uh, the, the anointing is upon him. But we're just glad to be with you tonight to worship the Lord. And uh, so we're going to try, I'll ask Mom if she would, that I've never been this homesick before. We've had uh, in our family and in our church family, we've done three funerals in the past two weeks. And it makes me homesick for heaven. Amen. And I, I, I'm telling you, heaven's getting closer. And if you're not ready for heaven tonight, I want to encourage you to get ready because Jesus is soon coming. Mom, if you would, start us out. There's a light in a window at the table's spread.
Amen. Heaven is not that far away. When I look at everything that's happening around our world, it tells me that Jesus is soon coming. Amen. I want my sister Renee and Daryl, if they would, to get ready and sing. I want to know how it feels. I've heard about heaven and I've read about heaven. But more than anything, I want to know what it feels like to walk down those streets of gold. Amen. Sing it, if you will. My mama and daddy talked about going home Since I was just a babe on their knee They said that nothing would compare to what was waiting up there One day we would finally be free Now I've never seen it But I keep on believing it would be a place like I've never known that I live this seems that peace is something I'll never find I try to find my load when all I've got to show is 700 things on my mind now I'm seeing visions of a crystal clear river where sins were gotten without a trace more than Pain. I want to know how it feels to make my way down the streets of gold. I want to know how it feels to have a talk with the saints of old. I want to know what it's like. hungry for heaven tonight. Amen. If you don't know Jesus, why don't you ask him right now to come into your heart? It would be the best decision that you'd ever make. I'm telling you, our world is in trouble tonight. We, we watched and we heard about what's happening in the, uh, with Iran and, and the, the oil refinery. And I'm telling you, these things happening around our world tonight. I had a man in the military tell me it's been several years ago. He said if the American people knew what was happening, that they wouldn't be able to sleep at night. Amen. But you know how I can sleep at night? When I lay down, I cast all of my cares upon Him because He cares for me. And it really doesn't matter if I don't wake up in the morning. I know I'm going to a better place. But what about you, my friend? Are you ready for heaven tonight? Amen. I, I want to know what it feels like to be in a world where there's no pain and where there's no cemeteries and no funeral homes. I want to know what it's like and, you know, to never have to go to another coal mine. I've been a coal miner all my life and I thank God for it. Don't get me wrong. Amen. But I'm looking forward to a place where there'll be no coal mines and Amen. There won't even be no Walmarts in heaven. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because we'll have everything that we'll ever need. My, I want to know what it feels like. How about you? I, I'm tired of all the trouble in this life and I'm ready to go to a better place tonight. Amen. 
Oh my, I'm glad I'm born again. That's why you got to be to get to heaven. You got to be born again. So dad, sing that for us, will you? You got to be born again if you're going to make it. Amen. Jesus Christ can change you tonight if you'll just ask him to come into your heart. Amen. Sing. We're born again. Free from sin. And I'm happy. He's out of everything you can see in high school and people around you. He's the best thing that's ever been shown to me. Amen. I've been Amen. down there and to uh, rewards banquets, and they asked me to pray, and I never received the first award because I'm going for that heavenly reward. Amen. I'm going after Him, yeah. not anything this world can offer me. Amen. Amen. Well, there's a long black train coming down the line Feeding off the souls that are lost and crying Rails of sin, only evil remains Watch out, brother, for that long There is protection 
salvation and there's peace the same burn in your ticket for that long black train because there's victory in the Lord I that you and I have from here to heaven. Prayer is the umbilical cord between God's will in heaven and God's will on earth. It is our communication, our fiber optic line, amen, that we can talk to heaven. Amen, you need to call out upon him right now. Men ought always to pray and to not faint. Amen, the scripture teaches us that we ought to pray. Jesus gave us the model prayer. He said, when you pray, say, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. Yeah, notice that he said this day. Don't worry about tomorrow, but give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 
you need to pray tonight. That's how you get a hold of heaven. Amen. All right, Ethan, sing about we can pray. I can pray until the walls fall down. There's healing all around. That's something I can do. I can pray in my secret place. Call it on your name. That's something I can do. Some of you may be going through the fire right now. And I, I noticed the verse in that song that you may have a wayward child. You may have one that, that you, you've tried to get to come to church and, but, and, and you've done all you can do. What else can you do? You can pray. Amen. You can pray. I'm telling you, prayer changes things. Hallelujah. Thank God I was raised on prayer. I remember getting up in the mornings and I'd hear my mom and dad in the bedroom. They'd be praying. They'd call my name out. I believe it made a difference in my life. And I'm telling you tonight, you can pray. Hallelujah. Are you ready? Come on up here. Shack and old Mandy 
go. still in the fire, walking through the flame, no matter where you find yourself at, in the course of life, he'll be there for you. I found him to be real underground in the coal mine. With millions of ton of rock over my head, I've called out upon him and he heard me. Amen. I'm glad he's still in the fire tonight. All right, Renee, you sing tonight. Amen. Thank God for his power. I'm going to let my daughter sing one tonight. She's not been here in a while, and I, I know Sister Margaret probably remembers when I was pregnant with the twins, and that's been 16 years ago. And they just got their driver's permits last week, and it's been a wild week in our house. <laughs> but the Lord is everything to us tonight, and if you are going through something, and He can be everything that you need, He can be whatever you need in your finances. Whatever you need emotionally, spiritually, physically, he's everything.
Thank you so much, 11th Hour Ministries from Hazard, Kentucky. I'm glad to see this 16-year-old, uh, so such a beautiful young lady, and <clears throat> able to sing and uh, and come back to be with us tonight. I remember when they was tiny babies and they brought them, and uh, <coughs> and uh, Daniel, I remember him coming in in a baby car seat too. <laughs> Uh, we'll uh, we'll let you, uh, the rest of you take a break. I'm going to talk to the <coughs> to the chief and <laughs> the yeah. two chiefs up here and see what we what we can find out. And uh, uh, but <coughs> you know I I really appreciate uh, that song that Daniel sang a while ago about uh, you know uh, long black train. We happened to be in concert uh, when we heard. Uh, Josh Turner tell oh. why he wrote that. He says God gave it to him oh. because he had been in school and he was studying, he was idolizing the life of one of her country music singers that died real early because of alcohol. And he, and he said that God gave him those words and, and to, uh, as a warning uh -huh. and well, explained that. that. Yes. And so yeah, he, he just Plain said, they, they, they God gave it to them, and that's why it has, you know, a good meaning. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, talk about the temptation of alcohol and not to go near it. All right. Well, we've got something really good here. I think uh, Terry, we we'll better just stick with this top and, and not all of all of this. All right. Uh, but, all right. Uh, Ooh, a, boy, that is awesome. Two uh, boys got saved tonight. All right. Amen. Amen. And, Amen. and you can tell where they call from down at the bottom page. Uh, let's see. Jason. Call from jail. My, my. Hallelujah. Thank God. Wow. Yes. Man, it don't Lord. matter where you're at tonight. That's God right. can reach down to where you are and rescue you. Yes. That's the yeah. power yes. of God right there, yes. isn't it? Thank yes. God for these yes. two tonight that have given their hearts to God. Yes. Amen. 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 We're not allowed to tell where where they are or their names, but God knows all about them. He okay. knows their, more than their social security number, <laughs> yeah. so He knows now the, well, they are, the He knows the very hairs on her head. Yes, <laughs> and Hallelujah. Uh, and how how that their heart has changed from black to white yeah. if, that, yeah. if they've really meant it. Yeah. Now uh, you know. That's that's wonderful, and you know, okay. Here's the gospel getting to those people. They're mm -hmm. not going to go to church, right? I mean, that's that's yeah. what this station is all yes. about, yeah. right? Amen. Getting yes. the gospel. I've had folks uh, tell me they were in a motel room and, mm -hmm. and were changing the channels and stopped. And I'm telling you, it's this this station is doing such a great ministry. And uh, I want to say thank you, Sister Margaret, for mm -hmm. for what you do and all the work and the hard hours and. Uh, you're just doing an awesome job here in Beattyville, Kentucky. Amen. Well, well thank you. Uh, we've known these folk for a number of years. Let's see, Daniel's how old? Eighteen. Eighteen. And so he was a baby when you yeah, first Yeah, a little baby. Yeah. 
-hmm. Packed him in a, <laughs> packed him in a, in a carrier Car on the first camp. Yeah. And, uh, we and, sure uh, do. Uh, thank you so he, much for giving us that opportunity to be a part of this family. Yeah, he, and he, such he a, loves it down here. He's such a testimony, such a good looking feller. Yeah. <laughs> And we're not yeah. going to tell the girls that he's still single, so now girls don't well. call tonight. We just, we're <laughs> just not looking yet yeah. for him. But he, anyway, uh, you folk have been pastoring how long? We've been pastoring for 13 years now. 13, okay. Yep, right downtown Hazard, Kentucky. and it's uh, Okay, yeah, uh, tell us a little you about, about your church and everything because, you know, we have new people all the time. But you've been preaching how long? I've been preaching since 1987. I'd have to count that up. That's that about 33, 32, 33 years. years. Yeah. 32, yeah, yep. long time. And, uh, I believe I've met every demon in hell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I'm still here. I'm yeah. still in the race. Thank Amen. God for his keeping power. Yes. Amen. You can make it uh, no matter what comes. Uh, you just got to hold on. And that's one thing I learned early. You got to hold on to God. Yeah. You can't. Yeah. You can't just give up because we're all going to have difficulties and we're all going to have trials and heartaches and, and uh, there, there's going to be things that you're going to face. And I, I preached a message just a little while back and uh, I was preaching about David when, uh, when he had the affair with Bathsheba, you know, and she got pregnant and God wouldn't permit the child to live. David fasted for seven days, I believe it was. And, and pray and hoping that God would change his mind. But the Bible said that the child died. Mm -hmm. And when it did, David just got up, washed himself, called for food. And, and they thought that perhaps David's liable to commit suicide or something, you know, uh, because he wouldn't eat anything for all that time. But David said, you know, the child has died, you know. And he said, I can't bring him back, but I can go where he is. And I was just preaching on a little simple thought on it is what it is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There are certain things in life that you can't change. Mm -hmm. Death is one of them. Mm -hmm. Death is going to come, and it is what it is. It's a part of life. And so there are things that you and I have to deal with. There's layoffs, there's house fires, there's car mm -hmm. wrecks, things that we wish we could change, but it is what it is. You, you gotta, you got to learn how to deal with where you're at. I've had a lot of trouble in my life. Mm -hmm. But I learned, you know, there's certain things that I can't change. It, it is what it is. Yeah. And I, I, like David said, I can't bring the child back, mm -hmm. but I can go where he is. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm making preparations yes. to go to heaven because yes. I know it's yes. going to be a better place. And uh, yes. if you don't know him tonight, like these two young men tonight in the mm -hmm. jail, mm -hmm. you can call out upon him and he'll rescue you as well tonight. Yes. Yeah, that is, that is so good. And, you know, we are free to choose, make our decisions, uh -huh. we're free to do that, but we're not free from the consequence of right. our sin, Amen. of our That's choices. Right. Yeah. Right. And, and every choice has a consequence. Has consequences. Yeah. I've made some bad decisions, too. Well, <laughs> hey, you're not the only one, yeah, so don't think you have. get the blue ribbon because <laughs> everybody else, everybody else <laughs> has too. Yeah, we all but have. That's, he... You know what I, helps me? He remembers we're, we're made of dust. Amen. Amen. And so That's... he knows why we do what we do. But, of course, we have to keep trying. Yeah. Right. We have to keep trying. And, uh, but um, anyway, that is, uh, uh, it's just so good to know that God is still, still taking care of things. You know, things will happen. And uh, last week I thought, I thought we had a, a answer to a prayer and I was just rejoicing mm -hmm. like everything because uh, well I might, might as well tell what it was I had a, somebody in her family that was about to get married and well, no, one, no one was very happy about it so I'd been a praying for it to get blocked well then here they have a big blow up and, and call it off <laughs> well I was, I was so happy and rejoicing and then the next day in talking to the girl Oh, well, they got over to the wedding was still on at the same time. Well. So now, see, Aww. I felt all deflated because I thought my prayers had gotten through. No. But anyway, uh, the Lord just assured me it's in His hands. Yeah. Amen. It is. And Absolutely. when they get in their 20s, there's not a whole lot you can do to, no, you can't no. spank their little bottoms and, and put them in the corner and make them change their mind, can you? No. no. But anyway, uh, God's still in control, and so He's still... He knows all about it, yeah. and uh, so that's what we're depending on. And okay, um, 
Now, if I railroad you up here to, uh, you haven't been here for a while because you've been kind of sick and uh, several things happening. So I want you to share with the people how the Lord, what he's brought you through and what you're facing. Yeah, I've had a, a lot of sickness. And, you know, the thing, worst thing about it is when you're sick, especially when you're in the ministry, you want to, you feel ashamed of it. But like Terry said, it is what it is. When he preached that message, it spoke to me. Mm -hmm. If it didn't speak to nobody else, it did to me because it is what it is. And, you know, we go through trials and tribulations. But I've had a lot of trouble with my lungs. I've been in and out of the hospital and had to take a lot of medicine. And But now last year, I think it was over five times. Or more, maybe I know in the, in the month of January, I was in for 21 months. 21 days. 21 days I'm sorry. <laughs> I get nervous. 21 days I was in. And they sent me home with oxygen. And they sent me home with one of those big oxygen tanks that you use at home all the time. Mm -hmm. You want me to use it at night. Well, last year went by, now it came to this year. Well, I ain't been using my oxygen. I ain't oh. been using my machine at night. I've been in the hospital one time with my lungs this year. I've been in twice, but only one time did I have pneumonia. And that's compared to a whole lot of times a year before. And I don't take medicine regular for my breathing. And the Lord has just, he's done wonderful things for me. People still, you know, and I myself question why. You know why? But things happen, and we just have to deal with them. But the Lord has showed up big for me because I could be on that oxygen tank. Mm -hmm. I could be having to use that oxygen machine at home. They come to check it every so often. The home care store will. And they said, you need to turn this thing on and run it every once in a while. Because <laughs> when we come and check it, if it ain't run up to a certain amount of time, your insurance ain't going to pay for it. And I was like, well, I don't need it no way. So, you know, I wish they just would take it back because I'm trusting God mm -hmm. that he's going to keep doing what he's doing. And now I've got a little bit of another trial. I'm going to have to have a hip replacement, but, you know, God's in that too. I almost didn't come tonight. I'm hobbling around, sort of ashamed of that, but I put my ball shoes on and come anyway because yeah, yeah. I'm going to do what the Lord's called me to do. And I sort of thought, oh, Sister Margaret won't get me up there tonight. <laughs> <laughs> but we got two grandbabies down in Lexington. They sent us pictures, and you ain't got to see them yet. They standing Aww. right at the TV watching Terry and Dan sing, and she took a picture of it and sent it to me. So Aww. hello, Kellen and Briggs that's watching us. Tonight, I love him, baby. Someday we'll get to bring him down here and let oh, you good. see him, Margaret. Right. But God's good, and he, even though I've got problems, he's still good to me. It is what it is. It is what it and is. And I take it every day and trust the Lord and move on. That's what we have to do. Well, you know, in Psalms it says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, mm -hmm. but the Lord delivereth them out of them all. Yeah. Amen. And so it's just the we learn a lot about ourselves and about the Lord when we go through yes, hard times. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, we, do. we learn we yeah. are not too nice sometimes. Right. right? Me. Yeah, that's <laughs> the truth. We, we find out, well, hey, you need... Got need, things to work on. Yeah. So we're... Uh, but I doubt if we ever get to where that, uh, that there's not, not anything to really pray about. But, you know, we do better when, when we're under pressure about praying. Absolutely, we, we yeah. Pray, we pray, we pray more. more, yeah. yeah. And so really, in one way, looking at it that way, it's a, it's a blessing when yeah. we get sick and mm -hmm. troubles come. Why? Yes, it is. We, we pray well, the harder. Bible says all things work together for the good yeah. for those that are called. And yeah. if you're called, then you're going to go through some stuff, but you just have to trust in the Lord and hold mm -hmm. on. Yeah, and, and, not, uh, and know that uh, it's not people we're fighting against. It's... it's it, evil spirit right yeah like, like right yeah terry said that uh, uh okay let's see now terry your program's on wljc on sunday at sunday evening at 5 30. 5 30. Yep. Well, right before they go to church they can watch and then go on to church yeah yeah yep. and uh, so uh, how's things are doing at your church well, it's going good we're just excited we're getting ready to uh, have a homecoming and revival we don't have the dates exactly say it yet but we're excited about that it makes 13 years that we've mm. had a church right down in in hazard and we're just so excited about what god's doing uh, I, I believe that jesus could come at any time yes. and uh, we're just trying to help folks get ready for heaven uh, i think it's an exciting time to be a christian uh, i think that uh, just any day now we could be leaving here and going to heaven uh, for the Bible said that the Lord himself is going to descend from heaven with a shout and the voice of the archangel, the trump of God and the dead in Christ are going to rise first and we which are alive and remain are going to be called up with them to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. 
Uh, I'm just excited that I'm ready. I'm just afraid there's a lot of folks that are not ready and they're yeah. just going about their business because, you know, the Bible said that scoffers would come in the last days and say, mm -hmm. where is yeah. the promise of His coming? For since our fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they are. So th there are people that says, I ain't coming. You all been sh hollering that for years. Mm -hmm. Just guess how close that he is now. And I read a very interesting article the other day, and uh, and I'll try to hush, but... Uh, no, that's fine. Uh, Amazon, you know, the, the mm -hmm. big retailer that you order online, that, that, that they've been experimenting now with uh, a hand scanner. You know, you just scan your hand using, your, your, I guess, your fingerprint and stuff. You don't even have to have a credit card or anything. And they were, the article that I read said they were talking about trying it in some of the food stores. And, you know, the Bible said that uh, the Antichrist, you know, you'd have to take a mark in your right hand or in your forehead. So I think the technology is in place. Uh, so I think that the church is getting ready to leave. And I, I'm just glad I'm ready. I, yes, yes. You know, be prayed up and ready to go. Mm -hmm. From such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man's coming. Mm -hmm. And uh, we want to encourage you tonight to get ready. Amen. Yes, I, yes. It's dangerous to ask the preacher to testify. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well... Well, I'm just I'm glad to hear to hear you because uh, it lets people know that we're serving a live God Amen. and He's uh, He's keeping you keeping you going. And uh, so, it, but you know, if if the world was all saved, by well, then we'd pray hard for Him to come yeah. come now. But oh, now yeah. uh, He He has this appointed time, and He yes. knows when He's coming back. And uh -huh. so. Uh, uh, our job is to try to do our best to try to get others to uh, accept him and come to know him as their personal savior. And then, you know, that's all we can do. Like I was talking about uh, that uh, wedding coming up. You know, there's not a whole lot you can do when they get in their 20s. Well, then uh, they're going to do pretty much what they want to. And it doesn't matter how good a story you tell them. They don't hear you. Yeah. <laughs> and so uh, that's the way it is with salvation. As wonderful it is, as it is, and with all the words that we can muster up, some people still cannot believe it or understand it. Mm -hmm. That's true. Uh, you, you wonder why everybody don't want to be yes. saved. Yeah. Yeah. Why yeah. don't everybody want in on this? It's, it's such a wonderful life. Yeah. Yeah. They were singing that song a while ago, I want to know how it feels. Mm -hmm. And I thought, why don't everybody want to know how it feels? Yeah. You know, that's... Everybody just, I don't understand, but. Well, we had, uh, we had a, our last brother that passed away. He was always a good moral person and paid his bills and didn't drink and, you know, he was just a good moral person and uh, had lots of friends and, but you know, it, he absolutely had a closed mind and ears to when we talked to him about the Lord. And uh, then when he came down with cancer and knew that he wasn't going to make it, he started thinking about, uh, you know, his, it woke him up. He said that was the best thing that happened to him was to get cancer. Yeah. because mm -hmm. then, And then after he really got saved, he said to the, the, us, the rest of the family, he said, why didn't you all tell me about mm -hmm. this? Yeah. And we, That's yeah. usually what people <laughs> say is why yeah, didn't I we, do it sooner? Yeah, why didn't... Why didn't we tell him we did? But he had <laughs> closed ears. But, mm -hmm. but you know, no, he he really got saved and uh, and was baptized and left in peace. We uh, he was the one the Lord spoke to me about. He he lived in Indiana and we'd heard that he had taken a turn for the worse. And so I had a friend that we was praying together on the phone and. And the Spirit of the Lord just blessed us so much that we thought, oh, he's going to be healed. He's coming out of this. And just about the time I uh, hung up the phone, the Lord spoke to me and said, I'll heal him on the other side. Wow. And he passed away the next morning. Wow. And so, uh, but you know, by him speaking to me and tell me that he would heal him there, mm -hmm. well, then there, uh, the grief was not bad right. at all because yeah. he was still going to get his healing mm -hmm. so uh, um, well uh, uh, so uh, what do you, what do you all have any idea on anything that could be done to help people understand better more to reach the I, I people? think we just got to keep doing what we're doing we got to keep praying and, and preaching the gospel uh, more than ever before and I, I've seen 
it seems like there's a movement across our world that, you know, they don't want to talk about the judgment or mm -hmm. uh, a lot of preachers won't mention hell mm -hmm. or, uh, you know, uh, and I think that if, if we could get preachers to, to get back in the pulpit and start preaching hell hot mm -hmm. one more time. And uh, I'm, I'm telling you, it, it's a message I think that's faded by the way. We want to preach a feel-good message or a happy message and maybe we can draw the crowd in. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I think we've got to get back down to the basics of just telling folks, you know, if you don't live for God, you're going to a place called hell. Yeah. You know, sin's not going to enter into heaven. And I know it's not the most popular message. You know, and you may have some empty pews at your church. Uh, but I want to help folks make it to heaven yes, more yes. than anything. And uh, the Bible said if we fail to warn them, Yes. That, that their blood would be required at our hands. Mm -hmm. We have an awesome responsibility, Sister Margie, mm -hmm. you do at this station, you know. We all, as, as ministers, have a responsibility mm -hmm. to warn people, uh, you know, that there's a place called hell, that if you mm -hmm. die in your sins, that's where you're going. Mm -hmm. uh, where the Bible said, there's weeping and gnashing of teeth, the worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. So. Our responsibility is, is you know, sometimes we've got to be the bearer of bad news. <laughs> you know, if you die lost, you're going to hell. But the good news is Jesus loves you, and he made a way out for you. If you'll ask him to come into your heart, you can have a home in heaven. And uh, I think that's if we could just get back to preaching, you know, like that, that, uh, that Jesus is soon going to return. And, and pray for folks. We need to pray like we've never prayed before. Uh, absolutely. Because uh, prayer changes things. Yes. Pray that convicting power upon them. I'm just glad to be called. Yes. Man, I am. I'm, thank God for the calling He placed on my life. And folk are leaving at all, at all ages of life, too, you know, that... Uh, Here's a genie from Lincoln County. She's 92, and she has some physical problems, and uh, has uh, she has um, her right eye, and she has breast cancer. All right, and then we have uh, um, have here's one Thelma from Madison County, uh, physical needs from a car wreck, and a 28-year-old grandson died, and she's trying to uh, reconcile with that. And then we also heard that uh, that one young man that was coming home to uh, his family up in Breathitt County, he got within eight miles of home and he wrecked and, and he'd been in the hospital all this time, but he, they said he died today. Mm -hmm. oh, he was man. in the military. And he'd uh, came home during when they sent him, uh, you know, to get out from that storm. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he, he passed today. And wow. then uh, a young man on a motorcycle uh, over in Owsley County um, hit a dog and killed himself and the dog. Oh, wow. And so that's a, so it's, it's just something, we hate death, we hate everything about it, but, but you know, if someone's ready to go, that is the best thing could ever happen yes, to them. Yes, it me. is. And you said you've had three church funerals? I've had three funerals in, in the past two weeks, and one of them was uh, my first cousin, Jesse Joseph. Me and mm. him grew up together. We were the same age. We mm. rode to high school together. Uh, man, we just we, we were close and, and preached together. Pastor mm. of the church for uh, 12 years Five or something years, like yeah. that, I think. Then he got cancer, oh. and uh, we had to bury him last week, and it broke my heart. And you know what, I've, I've just, I don't know, I've just been thinking now, every day that I get up, I say, thank you, Lord, for mm -hmm. one more day. Mm -hmm. I thank God for today. I have no promise of tomorrow, but I'm thankful that I got today. Uh, I, the statistics tell us that 2.5 million people die every year in the United States of America. That's 285 every hour or five every minute on the clock. Mm -hmm. Man, if you're able to hear me tonight, you are blessed. You are blessed. You've got one more day to make things right with God. You ought to be calling out on Him. And if you're saved, you ought to be rejoicing that you got just one more day on this earth. Amen. And, and, don't, and, and take advantage of the time that you have while you're here because time yes. is short. And we're soon going to be leaving. And yes. let's live for God and do the best that we can. Yes. Amen. Yes. Make it to heaven. Yeah, this world's... 
too full of injustice and so forth and so yeah. we're going where there won't be any sin. No one will be mistreating anyone else. No one, well, it'll just be be the best time we've mm -hmm. ever, we yeah. can't even imagine what oh, it's going to yeah. be. But anyway, like these two young men in, in uh, jail tonight called, and uh, we appreciate that, that uh, they was honest enough before the Lord and, and asked for prayer. That, that is wonderful. That's wonderful. And yes, it is. They're wanting a miracle, uh, they said, in their life, so I guess they're, they're wanting out of that big mm -hmm. house. And uh, now, you know, if you really, when you're dealing with the Lord, don't try to con him because you can't do that. No. And uh, if you really mean it, that you've repented and you're going to live straight, there's a, you've got a whole lot better chance of getting out than if you just uh, do like so many that uh, some, you know, when, when we had a grandson in there, well, he said everybody gets salvation, uh, gets religion <laughs> when you get in jail. Mm -hmm. So. And his didn't last very, very long when he'd get out. He'd behave himself while he's in there, but yeah. then when he'd get, get out, he, he'd forget. Yeah. So, that, I mean, when you're dealing with the Lord, now you can deal with people and, and forget all your promises, but, you know, that's bad. But it's not anything compared to trying to do the Lord that way. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. I was invited, uh, it's, I was a real young preacher, and uh, I got an opportunity to go to the Perry County Jail mm -hmm. and preach. And uh, I was nervous I could be, I was real young. And uh, we went in this little room they brought in, I, I think I counted, there was 13 prisoners they brought in. And I got up to preach and opened up a Bible, and I preached on how shall we escape. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. If we neglect so great a salvation, mm -hmm. I got their attention right off the bat, you know. Mm -hmm. But there is no escape in this world. Mm -mm. Amen. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? That's the only hope we have. And it's in Jesus Christ tonight. He is your hope. He's my hope. He's, yeah. he's the only hope we have in this life. Amen. And I'm glad I've got him on my side. Yeah. And I'm, I'm going to heaven after a while. And you know, sometimes people have been kind of pushed aside and neglected and everything, and they think that they are not really aware uh, that God is seeing them as an individual. You know, sometimes we've thought as a big mass of people when you come from a big family or something like that, but that's not true. God sees you as an individual, and that's the way that when you stand before him someday, it won't be, you can't blame uh, anyone else for your choices and your decisions. Only you. That's so right. that, and I'm glad for that, I aren't you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I I'd too. hate for some people to make my decisions, mm -hmm. my my choices, because I sure don't agree with them. <laughs> if, they, if they had the power, they'd keep some of us out of heaven. Uh, they me? would. They, <laughs> they, they didn't yeah. like us to begin with. Yeah. <laughs> so, but that's that's the good thing about it. They can't send us to heaven or hell either one. That's so. right. Amen. But, he, but the Lord says that we're to fear him that can. Uh, he said after they kill you, that's all they can do. But then uh, that to fear him because yeah. he can... Uh, Destroy both body and soul. And yes, yes. Yeah, man, and yeah. so, anyway, anyway, we we live in a wonderful time if we take advantage of it. That's if it. If we take the opportunities, yeah, Valerie, you have something else you would like to say? I'm just enjoying sitting here soaking all this in. <laughs> all right. There's sure good spirit here tonight, and. We're just so grateful to come. Grateful for my family. Haven't they done a wonderful job? And it's great how they can just switch out and mm -hmm. come and help each other. Mm -hmm. And there's no animosity between them. And we appreciate Renee and Daryl for coming and helping mm -hmm. us. And the spirit that's here tonight, boy, if I wasn't saved, I believe I'd be running to the phone and calling. Because <laughs> the Lord's good. He's yeah. good. And I, I sure do love him. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess they would like to hear some more music. You think you could... Yeah, we well, might sing one or two more. One or two more, <laughs> all right. Uh, that, it'll have to be a long song, won't it? Yeah. <laughs> be like uh, at one time we had uh, uh, Sister Tyson. and I'd ask her to uh, pray over the prayer request. And uh, and you know how she gets so carried away when she get a praying? And so we was 
it had come time to go off the air, and so they had to go ahead and take us off. And here she, she was, was still praying person. about 10 minutes later, <laughs> bless her heart. And oh. uh, the last we heard that she was still in a nursing home in Louisville, she's not doing, not doing well at all. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but we loved her, and she's a sweet little old lady. Mm -hmm. She really loved the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we will listen to some more good music then by the 11th Hour Ministry saying, let me give you their phone number. You can get in touch with them and uh, and be involved in their church if you would like to. 606-439-4988. And uh, they'll uh, be glad to hear from you. And so we're glad that, that Valerie was able to be here tonight. And uh, so we're going to be praying that the Lord continues to heal her. See, it's been a little at a time. Mm -hmm. but, and so that this hip surgery that you won't, that you be healed so you won't even have to have that that's yeah i mean that gosh. sounds good yes <laughs> well then there's not anything impossible with no, him no absolutely not all right well now i'll tell you what we've got one good looking fella over here with a big a dark suit on here he's a yeah <laughs> how old are you now Ten. Ten. Oh my well now that's uh that is a good looking feller, so he's yeah. doing a good job and uh, glad he loves the Lord. So let's go back to the singing of the 11th hour ministries. Amen. All right, we're going to try this old song. Uh, we've only done it about once together, and we're going to try it again. But it's an old song, everybody knows it. It's called Will the Circle Be Unbroken? And I don't want to break that circle, I, I want to be there. And I'm planning on being there. How about you? I want to be there with all my family. I've had some godly people in my life. And I'm looking forward to being to him. So we're going to try this one. I was standing by my window On a cold and cloudy
sing that it's out of this world I'm glad it's not in this world I'm glad it's out of this world hallelujah we're going to a better place after a while while traveling through this world we Yeah. 
God in the jail. He's God Hallelujah. everywhere. Joyce, are you ready to sing? He's God everywhere. He's God in California. He's Hallelujah. God in Tennessee. He's God everywhere. Amen. No matter where you're at tonight, you may be watching by internet around the world somewhere. He's God in the jungles of Africa. He's God in the hills of Kentucky. Hallelujah. He's God everywhere. Sing it, sis. I want to sing this, sing this out to my husband and Mike and my son Nick and mother-in-law Sally and Brenda and Danny and those I work with at UK. <clears throat> He's got on the platform. He's got back at the door. He's got in the amen corner. He's got all over the Lord, I know God is God, and He don't never change. I know God is God, and He always will be God. He's God when the lightning flashes. He's God when the thunder roars. He's God up in heaven. He's God down in my soul. I know God is God. And He don't ever change. I know God is God. And He always will be God.
Malachi, he said, I'm the Lord thy God, and I change not. Amen. Baby, come on up here now. Get us another. Now, I'm glad tonight he's God. Yeah. He's God everywhere. He, man, I'm glad he's still God. He's God in the White House, and he's God in the Poor House. He's God tonight everywhere, and he wants to help you tonight if you're in trouble, if you'll call out upon him. The psalmist David said, This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. Hallelujah. I'm glad he heard my cry one night. He reached way below the bottom and brought me out. Hallelujah. And he saved me. And I'm ready tonight for heaven. Are you ready? Get ready. Come on, friend. Well, the devil has stolen from me and uh, I'm going to gear myself up and I'm going to stand up and take back what is mine. I'm going to reach out for my hand and I'm going to take a holy stand. Yeah, I want my holy ghost. feel down in my soul. Amen. If Frederick said it ain't all in the shouting, it ain't. But boy, it feels good sometimes, doesn't it? Yeah. Just to feel the presence of God. And my sister Renee and Darrell, they're going to get ready to sing another song for us. And we just appreciate them so much for being with us tonight. Amen. So sis, sing as hard as you can now. to tremble at the light that you bring when you 
walk into the room every heart starts burning and nothing matters more than just to sit here at your feet and worship you song with two winning hands. Amen. I sing that in the G chord, I think. Amen. And he's the only way to get to heaven tonight. Amen. He paid a price for you and I. Amen. Some lawyers can win. only 
one place to go. So just to climb up that mountain, where it's still springs of fountain, that sparkle. song. We're going to try it out. It's called Beulah Land. Amen. Amen. And, uh, I 
know we haven't practiced it, but that's all right. We'll get on, get on up here. Amen. I'm looking forward to heaven tonight. <laughs> Whew, I feel the presence of the Lord. If you don't know him tonight, please call out upon him right now. He's available. I feel his presence, and I believe he's right in your living room right now. Amen. You need him more than you need anything. Listen to me, drug addict. You need him more than you need that next fix. Alcoholic, you need him more than you need that next drink. Amen. You need Jesus tonight. There's no other feeling in the world like feeling the presence of God. Come on in here, Frederick. Let's, amen. I'm kind of homesick for a country to which I've never been before. No sad. Time won't matter anymore. land I'm longing for you, and so. Thank you so much. That was a beautiful song, Beulah Land. It's been sung about and looked forward to for many generations, and, and it's still real. Well, we have some prayer requests we want to uh, get through here, and uh, uh, let's see, uh, Valerie, I have some, but uh, you have a couple important ones there. You yeah. Might, uh, you might let him read that one, make him feel like he's earned yeah, his 
earned his keep tonight. <laughs> Give you the big one. Man, all right. We've had a rededication here tonight. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank God. Hallelujah. Yes. That's what makes a preacher happy right yeah, there. I know. Man, I'm telling you, heaven's getting sweeter all the time. I believe there's some other folk out there tonight that, that really needed to call out upon yes, God. I yes, felt it in my yes. spirit. Oh, yeah. Amen. Conviction is gripping hearts tonight. Don't turn it away. Amen. Call out upon Him right now while you feel that tugging at your heart. You may not always feel that. Mm -hmm. And you need to do that right now. Amen. Thank Please God for His presence in. tonight. You want to read some of them there? Go ahead there. I've got one here that's really good. Virginia called from Floyd County and says she had a son that was in the hospital and he got saved. Amen. I don't necessarily right. know if he got saved tonight or when he got saved, but that don't matter. The yeah, thing so is, is he, he got, got saved. saved. Amen. So praise the Lord. Eva from Morgan has called and uh, she has some requests for herself. Uh, Mrs. Robbins from Somerset says to pray for her sister and their family. Um, I got another Edith from Breathitt County called in needing prayer for her body and a unspoken prayer here for a black lung case to be approved. Uh, an unspoken from Wayne County needs an urgent prayer request that she needs the Lord to move upon. An unspoken one here, prayer for a granddaughter. Uh, called in, Jeremy called in from Fayette County needing prayer. He says, the Margaret from Prairie County called in and her whole, she wants prayer for her whole family and herself. Amen. Alfie from Morgan County has several health issues that needs the Lord to move upon them. Donna from Corbin enjoying the singing and needs some prayer. Deborah from Fayette County says her family needs prayer. She has a nephew in the hospital at UK. Uh, Eddie, or, I'm sorry, Wayne called in for Eddie from Clay County. He says a brother in Indiana that had a massive heart attack. So he needs prayer. Uh, called in, Linda called in from Anvil, Kentucky. He said a niece in Cleveland, Ohio has to have open heart surgery and needs prayer. Ruby called for her, Kenneth Sturgill, who is her husband from Pound, Virginia that he's having blood pressure problems and breathing trouble, needs the Lord to move. Uh, Bernice called from Pike County and has a grandbaby, 17 months old, that needs prayer. Phyllis from Laurel says uh, she needs prayer. Eulene from Laurel County wants prayer. She's facing some surgery. Uh, Corrine calling for a niece in Morgan County has health issues and lost family members. Uh, Wayne called in for Donna from Clay County. He says his wife had had sugar problems and problems with her feet. Jury called in prayers for his neck. And a niece, in, Linda called for her niece in Claiborne, Ohio. She's calling from Anvil in the hospital after having open heart surgery and Linda needs to touch herself. Lots of prayer requests here. Yes, and we have one here from Berea uh, for William. He's 38 years of age and he's in the hospital. His kid and his kidneys are failing and he's on life support. 30, oh, wow. 38 years old. Here's a 11 year old kid that's been in a four wheeler accident and they're taking him to the hospital right now. And oh, I'll give it to you that one. He like that. Oh, Here's uh, Bertie. Uh, a grandson's in the hospital in Lexington. Sugar uh, real bad, and he got shot. His other, her, his other son had a car accident and died. He was only 22 years of age. Oh, wow. uh, and uh, here's, of course, Phyllis for uh, smothering problems. A granddaughter that needs to get in touch with her mother or grandmother. One, Ralph Farmer. Uh, we've known Ralph for many years. He has a tumor under his eye and it's causing headaches and pressure under oh, his eyes. Well, Ralph will sure be praying for that. And here's uh, Marie, she's 90 years of age and she's called uh, for a grandson that's going through a hard time. And uh, Joseph, Joseph from Fayette uh, enjoying the service. Mickey uh, is going to a funeral tomorrow and then she has to go on to be admitted to the hospital. So, and uh, Ralph uh, Farmer, uh, Don said, hello Ralph. So. We're going to be praying for you, too. 
Uh, Terry, I don't know, we're already down to five minutes. Do what you can in that length of time. Right. Here's a, a call from uh, Baltimore, Illinois for, mm -hmm. for Joe Asher. He's had a light stroke, needs a miracle and strength to walk. Uh, here's a call from Clay County for Earl and Don Gilbert, looks like, and Rosie, they need prayer. And Rosie wants to walk more and pray for her hands too. Uh, Eunice from Laurel needs prayer. Uh, Phyllis from Laurel, uh, pray for her and her family. Uh, Lisa and Stephen and Tony from Madison County need prayer. Uh, here is uh, Oprah, Oprah uh, from Lawrenceburg. Her sister uh, needs prayer. Her daughter Shirley both have health issues. Phyllis uh, from Marion County needs prayer. Amen. And uh, just so many. Here's Betty from Harlan. Uh, need prayer. Uh, Brenda from Manchester, her daughter needs salvation, really needs prayer. Uh, man, there's so many. Here's uh, mm -hmm. Roy Good from Danville. Uh, I believe that was it. I pray for her husband and wife and, uh, from Perry County. Pray we, for the three better, children need better, salvation. Yeah, we just got so of, many needs. We're, we're going to go ahead pray and pray for, for them up. right yes. now. If we yes. didn't read your name, that don't mean you ain't getting prayed yeah. for. Amen. That's we're right. going to believe God to meet all of these needs right now. Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we come Jesus, in agreement Lord. together, yes. God, your word promised us if two of us would agree in touching any one thing, that it would be done. So, Father, right now, God, by faith, we anoint these requests, and we're believing for miracles, God. We're going to be waiting on the, the testimonies yes, called Lord. in, God, that you've we moved and touched. Deliver God. right now in the name, name of Jesus, Jesus, for it is by those stripes that we God. are healed. The Father, we thank you for it right God. now. In, in Jesus', Jesus. wonderful Jesus. name we pray. Yes, Lord. Amen oh, and amen. Thank, thank, you, Lord. God. All right. thank, thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much. All right. We, uh, thank you, Lord. Uh, we appreciate uh, you folk coming tonight mm -hmm. and sharing and, and uh there's calls came in said what a blessing the service had been to them and so yeah. and uh, so we know that uh, well when we when we worship the Lord regardless of where you are we can all worship together That's because right. the That's Holy right. Spirit's every place all right uh, anything else in this last minute amen we just appreciate the opportunity to get to share the gospel with somebody and I'll tell you what I count it a great honor I'm so blessed. I'm blessed so much more than I deserve. I, I just feel so humbled just to be sitting here tonight. I'm yeah. telling you, God's just been so good to us, and thank you so much for the opportunity yeah. to let us share our, our faith with other folk. Now, let's see, 5.30 on Sunday. S Sunday evenings at 5.30. Sunday on WRJC, you can hear Terry preach. And I don't know if Valerie will be singing or not. Will you yeah. be singing? <laughs> we try, we sing try to get her to. Yeah. <laughs> She's she's practicing. Yeah, yeah. she's yeah. Waiting, she's waiting. waiting on the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> well, we uh, they always have to have an audience. It's where yeah. I get my uh, feeling uh, is that we we can listen. Well, we appreciate uh, you calling and all of the, the salvation dedication and uh, mm -hmm. now you fellows that's uh, called for uh, tonight. Well, just if you've made it right with the Lord, there's not anything can stop Him from doing what he needs to do for you. Amen. And so we'll be praying for you and hear, hope to hear a good report. Our yes. time is coming and gone, so for all of us, we want to say good night and God bless you. Thank you for being a part of the Hour of Harvest.